What's up guys, Terus Cousin here. In this video, I'm going to show you a very simple way to handle your requests in React in case you're not using or you can't use something like React Query. All right, cool. So as usual, we're on my computer screen and we can begin. What we're going to be building in this video is a request handler that is going to handle our requests for us in a predictable and controllable way. For this, we're going to be using the Axios library, but you can do this with fetch if you want, or you can do this in any other way that you want. The beauty of this is that you get to completely control what the API looks like for how your requests are handled, and you get to use any library that you want, and you get to configure how your responses actually look like. So what we're looking at right now is an empty file called requesthandler.ts. In here, we are going to build our request handler. But first, because we are working in TypeScript, I'm going to start by creating the types that we need to build the request handler, and then we're going to proceed with building it. The first type that I want to work on is the base request. This is going to be the request that we give to our request handler for it to handle the request for us. Essentially, it's going to be the Axios instance that will call some endpoint to fetch some data. So I'm going to do type base request. And this one is going to be a generic type from TypeScript. So I'm going to give it here two letters, T and then V. And if you're not familiar with generic types, essentially these letters T and V are used to represent the actual types that we're going to give this whenever we are using this in our code. But for the type definition that we're doing right now, we don't actually care what T represents or what V represents. All that we care is that we have a letter to use them in our type definition. So I'm going to make here a space. I'm going to do enter and then create a parenthesis. And this is going to be a function that is going to take in an optional params. So I'll do params question mark option. And then I'm going to give this T, right? So here we have this T that we give whenever we use base request. That T is going to go as the type of these optional parameters right here. That is in a nutshell, how you work with generic types in TypeScript. And this one is going to return a promise but because we are working with Axios, it's going to be an Axios response. So Axios response, which I can import directly from Axios. And this one is also a generic type, which means that we can give it something. And I'm going to give it here V. And I'm going to close this and save. Now, to keep things simple, for the rest of this tutorial, this T here is always going to represent the type of these parameters. And V is always going to represent the return type of whatever we're getting from the API. So now that we have our base request, we can start typing our base response. But for our base response, we need to handle two cases. We need to handle the success case and we need to handle the error case. So I'm going to come here and make a new line and start defining our success response. So I'll do type success response. This is also going to be a generic type, but this time only taking one argument V, the actual value that we're going to be returning. And this one is going to have two properties. The first one is going to be code. That is going to be success. This is a string literal and data, which is going to be of type V, right? So we have our success response. It takes in a V type argument and will return a code of type success, a string literal that can only ever be success. And then the data, which will be of type V. Then we can come here and create our error response. So I'll do type error response. This one is also going to be a generic type. And here we'll give it E to represent our error. And then this one is going to have code error. And then error is going to be E. Save this and we have our error response, which looks very similar to our success response. Now, one thing that I want to do is to give a default value to this error here. Because we are working with Axios, we're only ever going to expect one type of error. That's going to be an Axios error. There's no other errors that we expect here. So we can safely give this a default value of Axios error import this directly from Axios so that we don't have to provide this every single time, right? And this only works because we are using Axios and this is the only error that we can ever expect. Cool. So now with this, we can start defining our base response. So I'm going to do type base response. This one, as you can hopefully have guessed by now, is also going to be a generic type. It's going to take two arguments, V and then E. And this one is going to return a promise of either a success response and we're going to give it this v here or it's going to take an error response and we're going to give it the e 
here as well, close this and save. So our base response is a generic type, takes in a value and an error, and then returns a promise of either a success response or an error response and passes the value and the error to these corresponding types. And this is one of the benefits of using generic types in TypeScript is that you can pass them around, which makes this really, really useful. Cool, so now with this, we have everything that we need to start building our request handler. So let's make a new line and let's do export const request handler. This one is going to take in a function and it's going to take in a request. So we'll do request. And for now, we're not gonna give this any types. I just want to create the whole function first and then create types. This one is going to return another function that will take in params. And this one is going to return for now, just an empty object. We're not going to implement this right away. This is our request handler. We're going to use this to create our actual request functions, get this request, call them with the params, and then return in the implementation here, either a success response or an error response. Now what we need to do is we need to get rid of these red squiggly lines and actually add our types. So first I'm going to come here at the beginning of request handler, and I'm going to give it some types here. I'm gonna do T, V, and then E, and in this case, we have to default E here like we did, so I'm just gonna copy this and paste it here, just so that whenever we're using this request handler, we don't need to always provide the error. The error is always going to get defaulted to an access error. And then we can come here to our request, we can give this a type, we'll do base request, and then we're gonna give this T and then V, right? So this is the type that we created here, which returns exactly this here, right? So we've typed it here. Let me just save so we have some formatting. Then we need to type our params, which are going to be super easy, just like we typed them here as optional T. We're gonna do the same thing here as well. So optional, and then here, come here, and then do T, right? This T will come from here. And now this is going to return a base response of V and then E right? And we can save this. And now we do have an error, which is basically that we said that this is going to return a base response, but we haven't actually implemented anything. So the next step for us is to actually implement the response. Cool. So now we can actually begin implementing our request handler. But first, there's something that I forgot here, we need to put a sync, because this is going to be if I can type because this is going to be an asynchronous function that is going to return a promise, right? Base response is a promise, so we need to have this async. So we'll come here, and then arguably, this is going to be the simple part of this whole exercise. We can just do try, and then we can do const response equals the request. We're gonna await the request with the parameter, so Copilot is being very helpful. So we're using this request, and we're using these parameters here, and we're calling the request with the parameters, we're getting then a response, and then if we have a successful response, which is only going to be inside of this try block, we can just return an object with code success, and then data, response.data. Right, so this is our base response here, right? We're using the success response and we're passing it as data, our data here. And because we did it this way, we are automatically getting type inference. We know that this data is going to be of type V, right? So that's really, really cool. Then what we can do is handle our error case. So we'll do catch error. And then here we're gonna do return code error and then error error as E. And actually, I'm going to just put E here instead of error, and then do E here. And here, we unfortunately have to typecast our error as E, because there's no way for this piece of code to automatically infer the type. So what we have to do is we have to typecast it so that this will work as we expect. So now with this, we've successfully created our request handler. So this request handler will take in a request, we'll call that request with these parameters, and then we'll handle this piece of logic. And then if the request is successful, it's going to return to us code success with the data. Otherwise, it's going to return code error with the error that we can then use in our components. Now, the really cool thing about the fact that we did it like this is that for one here, we can provide any success response that we want. 
Here we said that we just provide a code of type success and then the data, but you could have done anything here. You could have provided the success status code of the response or even the entire response, right? It's completely up to you. And the other thing is that we don't have to necessarily use Axios. We could have used fetch here. And if we did use fetch, all that we would have to do is change some of these types to work with fetch, right? This is beautiful because if later on in the road you decide you want to change the way you make your API request from Axios to fetch, you can just make the changes here make the changes to your types and then return the same response and your code is going to work without a problem. Cool. So now we have a request handler that's fully functional. The next step for us is to actually use it to see how this works. So I'll come here, I'll create a new file, call this users.ts. And then this is going to be a fake API. We're not actually going to be fetching any data just so that you get to see how this would work in a real application. So first we have to import Axios from Axios. And then we want to import request handler from request handler, which we just created. And then again, because we are working in TypeScript, we need to start creating our types. So first I'm going to create interface user, and I'm going to just give this ID of type number and then name of type string. This is going to be the return type of our API. And then what we want to do is we want to create a type for our params, right? So we'll do interface get users params and this is going to be limit question mark number and then page question mark number right this is simple it's pseudocode almost we're not actually doing anything with these but in a real application you would have some sort of parameters limit offset page filters whatever else you want we're going to be using this to build our actual api function then we can come here make a new line and start creating our get users function so i'll do export const get users this is going to be equal to request handler. And this one is going to take in some types. The first type is type T, which is going to be the type of our param. So we'll do get users params. Then we have the return type, which is going to be an array of users. So we'll do user and then this, and then we'll close this types, call the function and then open a new parentheses. And here we can pass params. And this one is going to return to us an actual API endpoint. So we can do axios dot get and then we can call our imaginary api api slash users and then we can pass it here params save this and we have our get users function which uses the request handler gives it the proper types and then we'll actually run this axios.get function so then this request handler is going to call this function with the params here this is the request this is exactly this request here it's going to call that with the params and if it's successful we'll return this object here with code success and data response.data and if there's an error it's going to return code error and then the error as an object so that we can use it in our application this is really beautiful because it makes things very simple. You can create these in your own file and export these to use in your components. So we can come here, we can open a React component. This one is a server component. It's an asynchronous function, but you can do this in a client component with use effect. If you wanted to, it would work exactly in the same way. So we can come here, we can do const users response equals await get users import this directly from API users, call this function. Again, we can give it some optional parameters, for example, a limit of 10 and a page of one, right? Again, these would come from your state or from some other place if you're in a synchronous component. And then we have this user's response here, which if you hover over it is either going to be a success response of a user. So again, all of our types are properly inferred or it's going to be a, an error response with an Axios error, right? So that's our types here. So what we can do is we can do if users response dot code equals 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 error then we are in an error case and what we can do is we can return div and then we have access to the error so we'll do users response dot error dot message and this is going to be directly the error that comes from axios which is why we have this automatically typed this is going to be of type string because we have defined this as a default to be axios error right so everything works super nicely and then the last thing that we need to do if we are here we can just do users response dot data dot map and this is going to be a user so we're going to do user and then we can just return a div with user dot name and here we can give it key 
user.id, save this, and then we have our API fully functioning. We've fetched some data. If we have an error, we can return the error case. Otherwise, we just map over the data. And this makes for a really clean API because the error is handled elsewhere. We don't have to put try catch block in this component directly. And we automatically have type inference in anything that we do. If we have an error, we get the error here that is properly typed. If we don't have an error and we actually have data, we get the data here that we can use in our components. This is a really, really simple way to handle and structure your React fetch requests and you do it with only a few lines of code because really this is all that you need. So there you go guys, that was a simple way to handle your requests in React. Once again, if you have the opportunity to use something like React Query, you should absolutely go and use that because that is a better alternative to this and it gives you a lot more. This was specifically for cases where you can't use it or you're working within a project that didn't use it from the start and it doesn't make sense to convert everything to React Query now. And as a byproduct of this, as something that's really cool, we've also got to work with generic types in TypeScript, which is always a good thing and I think is really useful for all of you. If you enjoyed this video, as always, you can click here to subscribe. It would really help me out a lot. It would mean the world to me. You can also click here to watch a different video of mine, which I'm sure that is super, super awesome because YouTube is recommending it to you. And with that being said, my name has been Darius Cousin. This is Cousin Solutions. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Ciao, ciao.